Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Inspiration for today. I have got a real treat for you today. A couple, a little background. A few weeks ago, I heard this wonderful testimony from a young woman named JC. And uh, so she's with us today. Hi, JC. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so that's JC. We're going to listen to her testimony and then we're going to come back and, and finish up by talking with her a little bit. So enjoy her testimony and be challenged by it. Hey, I'm JC and I'm a senior at Tribuco and I want to tell you a little bit about the fight I've been in for almost two years. Over a year and a half ago, I was told that I was going to have to have jaw surgery to correct a problem with my airway. It didn't seem like a big deal at all until my surgeon gave my parents a ton of studies on the after effects of my surgery and suggested I see a counselor beforehand. It all seemed a little extreme, but I went along with it because, well, my parents made me. <laughs> it took almost a year to prepare for the surgery, with countless trips to chalk to see my surgeons and monthly visits to the orthodontist. Last August, I had the surgery. The doctors broke both of my jaws and rotated my entire lower face clockwise. They also had to move my septum to make sure I didn't have any surgery-induced breathing issues. When I woke up, my mouth was wired shut and I had a splint between my upper and lower jaws. So really quick, I want you to try something with me. Pin your tongue to the bottom of your mouth, clench your teeth together, plug your nose and try to breathe. Now try to swallow. This was my life. I had panic attacks, I had to have respiratory therapy, and I had to learn how to swallow before I was allowed to leave the hospital. It was hands down the worst time of my life. I couldn't speak, I couldn't eat, and I had to sleep sitting up because of the risk of choking on the massive amounts of blood coming from my incisions and my nose. I had so much bleeding, I made regular trips to the ER, and one night they even thought I was having a brain aneurysm. Oh, I also had to carry these special little scissors around everywhere in case I started choking and someone had to cut open the wires keeping my jaws shut. I lost almost 20 pounds, and if you saw pictures of me from that time, you wouldn't even recognize me. <clears throat> it was everything and more my surgeon warned us about. It really messed with my head, and when things should have been getting better, I was getting worse. I kept sliding into darker and darker places. We read studies about people blowing up their entire life after this surgery, and I went down that exact same path. My parents and sisters kept telling me to fight it, but I truly couldn't. I alienated my family and friends, and I ran far from God. To be honest, I was a nightmare to be around, and I was so lost in my own head, I didn't realize it. I spent a lot of time blaming everyone around me for what was going on inside of me. My mom kept asking me about my relationship with God. I told her I didn't have a relationship with God and she told me nothing would be right until I fixed that. I was in the fight of my life and I was completely running from God. I never really fight with my parents, but on Halloween, after screaming at my mom, I rolled up my sleeves and I showed her I had been cutting my arms. I felt out of control, angry, scared, and lost, and I didn't know what to do. When I showed my mom, she grabbed me and hugged me and told me they would get me through this. My parents have always talked to us about self-harm and suicide because we've had both in our family and they wanted my sisters and I to feel like we could always come to them. Even knowing that, it took me forever to tell them. I want to take just a minute and encourage you to talk to someone if you've ever had those thoughts. You probably feel alone and misunderstood, but even people you least expect People who seem at the top of their game, who have amazing families, seem to have everything, have dealt with these things. Don't be scared to talk about it. I can't emphasize this enough. Please, please reach out if you need help. Anyway, you might think this was my low point, but I still had a ways to go. I was still ignoring the fact that God was sitting in my corner, just waiting for me to come to him. I was still hurting the very few people who still believed in me. I was believing the lies my depressed brain was telling me. Let me tell you, when you're so deeply depressed, you really find out who has your back. Needless to say, the fall was a bad time for me. Then along came winter camp, and I was simply looking forward to a weekend away and having some fun with my life group. But God got a hold of me on the first night, and I couldn't run anymore. 
I hate public crying, but I broke down that night. I told Stacy what had been going on. Then I told my life group. I felt equal parts scared and relieved. My parents had been praying for a revival in me and it took root that weekend, but I still felt weak and overwhelmed. I didn't have the perseverance to stay on the right path. I was in and out with God, my family, and my friends. My family kept encouraging me to read and pray and spend time with people who were truly supportive and saw the best in me, even when I couldn't see it in myself. I have friends who showed me all kinds of grace and prayed for me on the daily. I had to finally decide to get up and start moving toward healing. I had to want to heal as much as everyone else wanted me to heal. I had to get and stay right with God. I wish I could tell you that I'm 100%, but I'm not. I'm a full-blown, messy work in progress, and I'm okay with that. I want to forever be a work in progress. I want to keep fighting to be healthy, and I want to fight for my friends like they fought for me. I want to be available to help others who are dealing with anxiety and depression or thoughts of self-harm. <clears throat> I spend a lot of time isolating and beating myself up. Don't do that. Lean on your team and prioritize your time with God. And if you're someone who has never dealt with any of these things, use your strength and inner peace to support someone who is. Don't judge them and don't talk about them behind their backs. Love them. Pick them up when they can't pick themselves up. Tell them you're praying for them and really, really do it. It works. And to my life group, the precious few who stood by me, I can't thank you enough. You fought for me and you're a huge part of the reason I can tell my story today. Load your team with solid, faith-filled friends. Make sure God is sitting in your corner. And when you go there, listen to him. Thank you, JC, for, for sharing. Of course. Well, you mentioned three things, and I know you put it into context of your own life story. But when you talk about the physical pain and the depression, and even the thoughts of suicide, I know that people who are watching, they may not have the same issues but they have uh, other things in their life that are similar and cause, and one of them is just the loneliness that we're experiencing right now. So you talk about what you're, I love your advice. You talked about wanting to heal, not hesitating to call on the team of people and just encourage, you were really encouraging people to have a team of people. Yes, for sure. Yours was your small group, although you call it life group. Yeah, um, I definitely leaned heavily on my family, of course. Um, I wasn't super open with my life group at first because I was very fearful in that time because I was very immature emotionally, I would say. And I still have a lot of work to do, but I would say I'm so much better with that now. I know our people are anxious to know how you're feeling physically first. Physically, everything's great now. Doing way, way better. Recoveries were good. Really? That's so exciting to hear. <laughs> so you go, I mean, in this day and age, are you able to get to the doctor? I'm not. I have a couple more checkups, but those have been postponed. Well, I guarantee you, JC, that if nothing else, you have gained some real prayer support today from the people watching this show I'm serious and then but and so spiritually and emotionally and how, how on those areas uh way 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 better um it's funny because everything fell into place when I regained spiritual strength which is exactly what I have I was being told the entire time I was going through my dark journey um yeah and the second I finally started relying on God again, things really started to turn around. That is a huge lesson for all of us. Hey, thank you for sharing today. I thank so appreciate it. Now, one last question. So when we open up for worship again, I know Stacy, my daughter, is your life group leader. Can you, got, can you guys come down to Laguna Woods? I know they want to greet you in person. Yes, I would love that. <laughs> You don't mind having 30 grandparents at one day? I can't think of anything better. That a girl. Well, bye, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.